Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the uh, commodities market and the precious metals market. And before we start, we have to look at the US dollar index. Uh, the US dollar index at bottom at uh, 91.73. Uh, um, a few weeks ago and ever since uh, we have been basically appreciating and this of course has had uh, an effect on the value of of um, oil and also it will have a um, significant effect on the value of the of gold um, so just to have that in mind uh, because that will basically be one of the my main an analysis for this uh, for this commodity and precious uh, gold video is that uh, due to the uh, appreciation in the U.S. dollar index, it may have a significant effect on the value of oil and also the value of the gold, particularly. Uh, so we may see um, the U.S. dollar basically breaking uh, the fifty moving average. It hasn't basically tested it really yet, but um, everything points to um, an appreciation in the uh, U.S. dollar. As the stocks go lower, usually um, the U.S. dollar index will go higher. And if that is the case, we will basically see lower oil prices and we'll also see lower uh, gold prices. So if this 50 moving average breaks and we have a green candlestick above the 50 moving average then we will go basically to the 200 moving average meaning that the value of gold will go significantly down and the value of, of oil for example will go significantly down we can see basically what happened here back in, uh, back in march um, and we could see a repeat of something similar like this probably not this extreme but uh, but as, um, for example, uh, the value of, of stocks are going down, which are extremely overbought and overvalued at the moment, uh, people will basically flood to, to the dollar and uh, that will have a negative price a value, negative effect on oil and also on gold. So if you look at oil first, WTI, we have been, we were trading within this uh, uh, five to ten dollar uh, price, and uh, last week we basically broke down. We uh, we broke the two hundred moving average, and then all of a sudden we basically just broke down quite significantly. This was also due to the fact that. Uh, Saudi oil minister uh, came out and said that the Saudi Arabia would to produce uh, more oil. And of course, uh, the higher production of oil will basically decrease the value of oil prices as demand is just not there. So the oil markets are extremely fragile at the moment. If, uh, if uh, for Saudi Arabia, Russia or the United States or any of the basically main uh, producers of oil um, come out with news that they will be basically will be increasing their production then the value of oil will fall significantly so we were talking about this uh, a few weeks ago or i was talking about this a few weeks ago that we probably go all the way down to the fibonacci retracements so at the moment we see we'll probably see that the oil will go up uh, towards uh, the 50 moving average which is resistance at the moment and then we'll go break down so at the moment this is basically um sell on the on the uh, on the increase in value every time we get close to the 50 moving average that makes a selling opportunity and we'll probably sell all the way down to the 30 level uh, and probably also down to the to the fifty level, um, because just because the world economy is just isn't there at the moment, there is no reason for oil to be at this level whatsoever. Um, uh, GDP is uh, in most countries is falling off a cliff, and um, unemployment rates un unemployment um, 
is just on the rise. So the demand for oil or uh, or, or production in the world economy is just um, decreasing. So there's no reason why uh, the value of oil should be increasing. So as I said, we'll probably also see uh, the appreciation in the US dollar index, then that will have further uh, negative effects on the on the on gold. So at this moment, I'm not a buyer in this market. I am a seller on every single time we basically get a, a significant increase in this uh, in war in gold. Uh, not gold, sorry, uh, oil, and I will do that until we get basically down to the 50 Fibonacci retracement. If you look at the uh, um, technical uh, indicators, uh, we are basically underneath, uh, very negative for the MACD. Uh, the stochastic is basically flat at the moment, and, um, and the RSI is near oversold. Um, area so we could see an increase before before we go further down and when we go further down it will become really violent uh, similar to basically what happened here so every single time we get close to the 50 moving average we basically go straight down and it, we probably don't go uh, as fast down as we did uh, back in the uh, uh, back in February, March, but when uh, we go close to the upside of the of the 50 moving average, we go quite violently down. So if you look at natural gas, so natural gas basically broke down uh, last week. However, we technically had a bounce on on Friday session. And the reason why we have this bound is because of the extreme weather conditions in the United States. Um, this market is, is highly correlated with uh, weather conditions. If we have a very warm summer or uh, uh, warm conditions in the United States, uh, then the price of natural gas goes up. If you have extremely cold weather, then the price also goes significantly up. And at the moment, we are... the the wildfires that are ravaging the um, the United States at the moment, um, or the heat wave, is basically keeping the price of natural gas up. And as long as that is the case, the price will be, probably won't break down significantly. Um, uh, you can see that we went down only, I expected us to go down to the Fibonacci retracements of around... 2.25, but but uh, 2.47 was uh, was quite resilient, was supportive, and we basically bounced from there. Um, so we're probably going back to the the highs of 2.7, and um, if we break that, then we become go beyond that, and we'll go to 2.9, and then we'll go to to 3.4. Um, as long as the weather conditions in the United States um, are the same, and there are, are and it's uh, the heat wave is still the same, this price will continue upwards, and it may jump quite significantly. If we go back to um, this was in October, November, December in two thousand eighteen when we had really cold conditions in the United States, you see that the price just explode to the upside. So we may see something similar, probably not this uh, extreme, but it can get this extreme. Uh, this is a really volatile market when it, uh, when it starts to increase in value. So if we look at copper, Yes, uh, so copper has been on the increase by uh, all the way back from March uh, to uh, to July, where we basically created this uh, bullish flag pattern, and then we basically took off again. And slowly, this market is just increasing. And I think it's just a matter of time before we basically go higher from here, and we'll go to 3.3. Uh, .3. Um, this 
market at the moment is not growing as fast as it did uh, previous months. Um, uh, but that's probably a good thing because uh, parabolical increases like this only have just a um, massive downside. So that we basically took our time with this bullish flag and also taking our time to go higher from here is, uh, is, um, is a good sign. Uh, so the 50 moving average is significant support. We can see that we have tested it several times. Every single time we basically get close to the 50 moving average, it bounces. So uh, that is a, a good buying strategy, basically getting close to the 50 moving average, having a stop loss right underneath. If we were, go, if, if we were to go south, then the stop loss will basically save your accounts. Um, at the moment, we are at 3.049. And we'll probably, at this point, um, considering the, um, the technical indicators, probably go to to uh, 3.08 before going back to the, the 50 moving average. This market seems like that is just uh, keeping close to the 50 moving average and going uh, slightly higher all the time. So. Technical indicators, we are not oversold, not overbought on the RSI. The, the, the stochastic is basically um, also just flat in the moment, and the same goes for the MACD. Um, so at this point, I would not enter this market. I will basically wait until we get close back to the, to the 50 moving average and then uh, buy or wait until we basically break this level in order to uh, uh, for the market to indicate that we'll go higher. Uh, break of the 50 moving average will basically open up for the, uh, for the 200 moving average. Yes, and that's basically it. So if we look at gold, gold market. So uh, gold looked extremely promising only a few weeks ago, but I have been uh, increasingly skeptical of gold. I know that in the long run, this market will go higher, but in the short run, I am skeptical that we'll basically have a breakdown. And that is due to, for example, the uh, US dollar index that is appreciating at the moment, which may put pressure on this market. It will not increase similarly to this, as long as the US dollar is basically increasing in value. Uh, we are seeing a significant pressure on, um, on uh, stocks at the moment. And usually when stocks go, go, go down, the, the, uh, the US dollar appreciates and this market also goes down. So if we were to break the 50 moving average uh, and break the 1900 level, uh, we will go much lower from here. We'll go all the way down to 1800 level and most likely also test uh, 200 moving average. At this time, I'm not jumping into this market. I basically want to see a, a, a really nice green candle here and also see the US dollar index go down before I basically will enter this market again. So we have been trading within this triangular uh, shape, we can basically put it over here. And at this moment, we can break to the downside and we can break to the upside. We're basically right in this corner at the moment. And, and the technical indicators do not look favorable to the upside. I can be completely wrong, uh, but we basically need to see a mass, a green, green candle close below, uh, above this resistant line. Uh, we need to see the MACD cross the signal line, the indicating that will go further up. And we also need to see the stochastic uh, change direction. At the moment, it's basically go downwards. And the, the RSI is basically technically flat. So 
I'm not jumping in this market. I know that in the long run, this market will go back to 2000 and 2001 and probably also to 2500 uh, and most likely also to 3000 uh, due to the fact that uh, central banks around the world are, are uh, just pumping liquidity into the markets. And that, of course, uh, are, is a positive effect on gold. Whether or not it will happen right now, or, or, but in the, is uncertain. However, in the long run, that is, is, is highly probable that, that uh, gold will go higher from here. But we haven't had a major pullback. We, of course, we had a pullback here. But we haven't had a major pullback all the way down to the uh, 200 moving average. At the moment, the distance between the 50 moving average and 200 moving average is quite significant. Uh, it would be healthier for this market if we had a similar breakdown as we, uh, we, we saw back in March in order to basically close the distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. The further this distance, uh, the more volatile uh, the fall will be when we basically have this fall. And and basically we'll see that at, at some point. We can see that this parabolical increase here led to this a massive red candle. And I prefer growth like this. I don't really prefer growth like this. This is technically Bitcoin or technically a bubble where everybody's just pumping money into this market and when we basically hit a certain uh, resistance level, it basically just snaps. And um, yes, that is, uh, I prefer basically markets that uh, increase steadily um, uh, and predictably. And at this moment, this can go to the upside, this can go to the downside. Uh, I would just take my time and just wait at, the, at this point. So we look at silver. Silver is fairly the same. We can see this massive distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. And at this point, this market needs a massive pullback, similar to this pullback. Um, this market is also trading within this, uh, this triangle. You can basically see it here. And we're at the moment right smack in, in this corner, meaning that we can break to the upside or we can break to the downside. Due to the fact that we are, the distance basically between the move, 15 moving average and the 200 moving average is so significant. This would be healthy if we basically went down and tested the 50 moving average just in order to close this distance. Um, the technical indicators are not favorable to the upside at the moment. We may go higher, but if we go higher, we'll just see more of these red candles. We'll probably see a parabolical move, and then we'll see just uh, uh, one of these red candles. And that is technically not... It's very uncertain to uh, to trade in those uh, situations. So, as gold, I prefer when we basically we have a steady growth uh, similar to this instead of this massive increase in uh, the value of um, of uh, of silver, um, because you can basically invest, invest, and all of a sudden you just go bang, and you lose quite a lot of money. So we look at uh, the technical indicators. The MACD is not close to the signal line. We're basically heading downwards. And um, and the same goes for the stochastic. It's completely flat. And the same goes for RSI. It's also completely flat. So at this moment, I will take a wait. If we have a green candle above this uh, resistant uh, area here, then we'll go higher. If we break the support, uh, we'll probably go down to the, to the 50 moving average. Uh, we may also go down to the Fibonacci retracement. If we look at this, 
we'll probably, if we break the 50 moving average, we'll go to uh, 38.2, and then we'll go to 50 at 20, and that would be a really good thing, to be fairly honest. Um, this mar- this technically what this market needs is it needs is massive pullback uh, to the 20 level, uh, right uh, above the 200 moving average or close to the 200 moving average in order to go higher. That would be a, uh, in my view, um, a, a good buying opportunity and also much healthier for this market. So you look at Koa. So I said last week that we basically would have a pullback, and yes, we did have a pullback. Um, we had this bullish plank pattern here. We we exploded to the upside, and now basically we went crashing down. Um, so this market is fairly violent. When it basically goes up, it goes up extremely fast, and when it goes down, it goes down extremely fast. Uh, but at this point, the 200 moving average should be support. Um, it probably won't go down there. Um, if we look at the Fibonacci retracements, uh, we are basically, we have a lot of support here. We have the 30, uh, 38.2 Fibonacci retracement, we have the 200 moving average, and we have all of this support uh, historical pattern also here. So don't expect this market to go below the uh, 2.5 level. Um, I would just wait for a, a nice green candle above this uh, uh, this candle here, and then that will indicate that we'll go higher. It's something similar to that candle there and that candle there. Um, so at this moment, just wait for a close candle above this one or the next one, and this market technically will go higher. We are, looks like we are trading uh, higher higher lows, and that is a, technically a good sign. So the next level will, of course, be these highs of uh, 2.7, and then we'll go to 2.8, and if we are really bullish, we'll go to 2.9. Um, the only thing that basically will get this market to collapse again if is that if um, the country will shut down their economies again. Uh, I don't expect that to happen because at this point, most countries can't afford that to happen. So, um, yeah. If you look at the technical indicators, the MACD is basically uh, is pointing downwards, indicating we'll go probably sideways or a little bit lower. Uh, we have the stochastic that's about to cross the single line. Uh, and we have the RSI that is, a, is a kind of flat in the moment. So at this point, um, I would just wait for a green candle above here, and then it, that will indicate we'll go to the, uh, the high here, and then we'll go to this next uh, resistance level at 2.8. So I have added platinum to this analysis as well. Um, so this is a market that has been similar to copper and the other pressure metals, um, has been on basically a really nice runs uh, ever since March. So we bought an out at, uh, at 584 back in March. And at this point, we are at around 929. And, and similar to copper, it has been very supported when it comes to the 50 moving average. Every single time we basically get close to the 50 moving average, we basically have a pop to the upside. We can basically see it here. Uh, we have this bullish pattern, uh, flag pattern here, and then we pop to the upside. We go back down to the 50 moving average, and then basically we go up again. And uh, at this point, Yes, of course, we'll probably go higher. We just um, we just had uh, 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 basically been been um, testing the 50 moving average now for five days in the last weeks, and now we're basically ready to go higher. 
And we also can see that technical indicators, all of them are uh, uh, are indicating that we will go higher from here. So the next highs are at uh, 1.002. Um, that will have significant uh, resistance as this was significant resistance in the past. Uh, we can see it all the way back to, uh, to um, 2017. If we look at uh, weekly chart, um, platinum is technically really, really cheap. If we go all the way back to 2011, we were at uh, 1.862, and at this moment we are at, at 928, 29. So, yes, this is a market that has massive potential so to the upside, um, and it looks like at this point, we have crossed um, the 200 moving average in the, 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 in the weekly chart, and we are about to go much higher. Uh, yes, this is um, a market that looks to have a great potential. Uh, the people that bought down here have made a lot of money on this market. So, hope you find this uh, video helpful. You're welcome to support the channel by subscribing. Uh, and leave a like and a comment and uh, click the bell button if you want to see our newest videos. So uh, good luck and, uh, and thank you very much.